Bon Pita. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. So a bit of an overview of altcoins, nothing particular, nothing specific. So good news in a way. I mean, it depends on how you interpret charts and news and things like that. But you know how we've been following Bitcoin uh, from the, the breakout that the Itchy Cloud said we're going to get it, so we got it, and then we got a continuation drive on that, and we got that, and then that came to an end, and we got that, and now we're consolidating, and we got that, and we got the Golden Cross, which is over here, and I've been saying... You know, when you get golden crosses, it's very common to come down to retest it. So we came down, we didn't quite touch it. I said, look, I'm not quite comfortable until we retest it. Plus there's a CME gap down here, about 40,500 thereabouts. So over the last, what, the last four hourly candles, about 12 hours ago, we tested it. So well done, Bitcoin. You've now tested the golden cross. So there'll be all these people out there going, oh, we're going down. Oh. It's a bear market still, and look, I've uh, I've said many times that the the bears still have control over the larger term time frames until we reclaim that uh, that twenty weekly on the on the on the obviously the weekly, which comes in at the moment at uh, fifty thousand five hundred. It's descending. It's got a negative slope on it. These things happen. You know, the bears have control uh, by the tune, but to the tune of sixty five percent, more likely to remain in this portion of the Bollinger Band. But by doing that, that means that we could test up to the top of it. So there's nothing to suggest that we can't have one of those moves up like that. Now there is the uh, the Fed meeting. Is it today? Or they're just going to sit around and talk about stuff? Look, I think we all know what's going to happen with the Fed. Uh, the, 50 ba the 50 basis points is almost guaranteed, and the markets know that too, which is why we had this. You know, we were saying that, you know, when the inflation reports come out, yeah, again, rather than just going through everything that I always say, I mean, we expected it. The reason we expected it is because we priced it into our heads. That's why we were able to predict the move, which would have been a pump and then a tailing off, which is what we've got. So again, you know, the idea is you move with the market, uh, you, you recognize what the market's responding to, and just just like anything, it's not necessarily the actual announcement itself of what it's going to do. It's the implication of the announcement. So you get, it's like playing a game of chess. I don't know if you like to play chess, but the idea is you've got to try to think not just about the move that you're playing, but moves several steps ahead. You know, the more you can plan your your moves ahead, the more likely you are to win. And so I suppose that's what the best way to think about what a market's doing. A market is going to respond to the figures, even though inflation at 7.5% in theory should mean that everything goes up, because this is the store of value. This is the hedge against inflation, isn't it? Which it is. Of course it is. Anything anything that's uh, that, you know essentially an investment, whether that's, I don't know, it's property or, yeah, I'm going to say it, gold, whatever. It's all a hedge against inflation, uh, but why did we dump when the inflation was at an all-time high? Because it's already been priced in. <laughs> <laughs> Inflation's been priced in uh, for the best part of a year now, uh, and uh, and now what we're looking for is uh, pricing in the inevitable tackling of the inflation. So counterintuitive to the you know what people might think. But the idea is you think ahead like a game of chess. And now we're thinking ahead like a game of chess that the largely the move has largely been priced in on the way down. And so whatever the Fed say today, expect is it today? I think it is today. There'll be a ripple in this market, obviously. It'll do whatever it does. Yeah, whether it pumps and dumps and pumps and dumps, or it dumps and pumps and pu dumps and pumps, or whatever it does, it doesn't really matter. Because the idea is you, you, you need the clarity, which is what I've been saying. You need the clarity. Tell us what you're going to do, Fed, so we can work around it, all right? And we're pretty sure we know what you're going to do, which is why the markets all look like this. Stocks, commodities, crypto, they generally all got to do this. We think we know what you're going to say, which is why we've behaved in this particular in this particular fashion. But just tell us so we know. So uh, on a chart basis, it's not looking too bad. This is what we wanted, is what we've been expecting. And again, you know, it's boring to say that, but uh, it is working out. And that's what it's doing. You know, the golden cross formed. We dumped down into it. No buy signals at the moment. If you want to try and catch a knife, that would have been the place to do it. We've been waiting for that since the golden cross took place. An inevitable test into it. But we also think that there's a good chance that the CME gap gets gets tagged as well. So if we are going to have volatility today, if it is today, if they're going to say it or do something, then easily 
we could dump down into it, we could pop back up to this descending col uh, consolidation from the original uh, pump that's been going on over these last couple of weeks. That could happen. So CME gap gets filled, we close above a 200 exponential on the on the, uh, on the four hourly, and we come up to test this level. If we break out from here, we go up to 46,500, uh, and maybe even continuation. It all depends on what the Fed are going to say. Again, there's not much that they can say, in my opinion, which would dump the price a horrendous amount more. I do strongly feel that there is a uh, there is a, a very good chance that we've already seen the low for Bitcoin. The chart structure has changed since breaking out of this consolidation, uh, and uh, and now we've got our initial pump up and uh, consolidating into the golden cross, which usually is something that's quite bullish, and we see a reaction from there and a continuation on to a new local high. So this is our high here, this is our low, this is a higher and a low, and then we'll be looking for a higher high and a higher low, and so on, so on, so on. So it is pretty simple at the moment, but again, at the same time, I do strongly feel is that this week, because of the expected volatility anyway, uh, and the lack of actual buy signals, uh, we had buy signals a couple of weeks ago for Bitcoin, we had them last week for altcoins, now we don't have any buy signals across the board, we just have a consolidation on the short term time frames, although that is going into a golden cross, which is technically seen as a bullish retest. Um, we don't have any particular buy signals, so I'm happy just to sit back and watch the uh, watch the show, watch the Bitcoin show. There's no need to go crazy. Don't have to trade all the time. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks, made some significant gains, even just on spot trades. You know, just on spot trades, uh, we've made some decent gains. Never mind any of you lot that want to do the futures stuff. I mean, um, it's, it was pretty pretty obvious stuff took place last uh, last week and the week before uh, at the moment not quite so obvious it is a matter of trying to buy supports based on moving averages and bullish retests but it's not as simple as it was you know last week for altcoins and the week prior to that for bitcoin so i am going to leave it with you there there's not really a great deal more to say um but we'll keep our eyes on the prize and we'll see what's going on uh, but overall i'm not particularly bearish on this for anything major to take place uh, I'm not particularly bullish on this either. We're still in a major consolidation generally. This could be the accumulation, but again, given the way that the itchy cloud looks at the moment, it's not going to give us any major signals for a large, large move that's going to change the overall uh, structure from, uh, I suppose, into a bullish scenario. It's not bullish right now, um, but it could be simmering some bullish moves probably over the next six weeks or so and, and we'll keep our eyes on that and keep our fingers over the green button for a long position but not right this minute no 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 we'll, we'll see where we go in the next four to six weeks and we'll only press that that, that green long button when it comes to uh, generating signals on a daily because that's where we could really we could have at that stage really if we get some decent signals on the itchy cloud on the daily we we might be able to reverse the entire trend, push up into the 50s, you know, and see where we go from there. But we can't do that at the moment, uh, not at this current price with this current setup. Although a bullish retest of the Golden Cross has happened, and so it wouldn't surprise me at all if we did push up to 46,500, maybe even this week, with or without whatever the Fed says. Right, I am going to leave with you there then. Have a nice day, and take it easy. Bon, pita.